right, we're now at a place, it's on Tim Tatua, Wesley Water Waterless. It's a little tiny church in the middle of nowhere near a farm. There's a, um, a building called Wesley Hall next to it, and it has got a small what graveyard. Very small church, looks quite old though, we're just going to have a ramble round there now and see if we recognise it. Very small churchyard, we've got um, a William Watson who died 20th of August 1976, age 63, and a Sidney Webb next to him, born the 20th of December 1884, died the 15th of December 1964, and Julia who died 1878, no, born 1878, died 1963, was his wife. We've got George Richard Clements, born April 19th, 1899, died 18, 19, 8, 1980, and Emma Clements, born 1908, died 1981. Yeah, then we've got um, Richard, uh, Joanna, wife of Richard John Barrett, that's with an I in it. We passed peacefully away May the 17th, 1905, age 70. And a Richard John Barrett who died May the 16th, 1913, age 73. Yeah, got William C. Turner who died November the 11th, 1931, age 55. And also his wife Annie. Abigail, who died January the 28th, 1933, age 67. And there's some skeletons. There's Eliza Bridge, who died November the 22nd, 1895, age 68. And a Frederick Bridge, who died January the 8th, 1890, age 39. Oh, God. All oh, right. I'm going to go in those bushes in a minute. Right, we've got, um, we found a mason. Sacred to the memory of John Mason of Wesley Hall, who died November the 14th, 1870, aged 65. Also, Mary Ann, widow of the above, who died January the 6th, 1902, aged 82. This is a big monument, which has got, yes, there is a Wesley Hall next door. Hold on, it's got a big pot on the top. In, it's also on this big, this is taller than me, this this um, monument. Albert Edward Mason, who died January, I remember an Albert Edward, died January the 16th, 1930, age 66, and his wife Clarissa Martha, who died March the 12th, 1966. Oh, same year as my mum, aged 100 years. Also, oh, their daughter, Dorothy, who died, wife of John Madden, who died July the 26th, 1984, aged 84. Then on, this, on the other side, we've got Henry Mason, who died October the 2nd, 1897, aged 53. Have I done that one? Um, I don't know. Oh no, then, also, this big stone has got writing all over it. It's John and Mary Ann Mason of Wesley Hall, who died June the 19th, 1860, um, in the 19th year of her life. So she was quite young when she died. And that's a big stone, with, like I say, a big pot on it. That, um, Wesley Hall is next door. Yeah, Wesley Hall's next door. Has been rebuilt over the original. We've got some crisps in here. Back of this little chapel, it's got a little tiny lead spire. You know, and a little tiny cross. It looks like it's been probably built in two stages. Um, oh, there's a little grave here. It's probably had more graves in it. There's lots of hickledy pickledyness going on here. Um, it's a footstone there. Looking inside. Here, yeah, it looks well kept. I don't know if we can get in. To get any leaflets. Edward Bridges. Bridge. Yeah, bridge. It might be an S. I think there might have been an S. 
I think he died 1902. And Anne, his wife. There's an Edward Jennings who died February the 27th, 1870, aged 34 years. Also John, his son, who died August the 7th, 1851, aged six months. Also William, his son, who died September the 12th, 1860, aged two. Also Elizabeth, his daughter, who died March the 7th, 1867, aged six years. And then something, William, his son, died July the 24th, 1860 something, aged 22, so they didn't live very long. James Plum, who departed this life November the 28th, 1870, aged 65. Also, Jemima, widow of James Plum, who died June the 16th, 1884. Cyril George Bridge, who died December 1899, aged, it looks like 12 years. They did have big graves, some of these people, didn't they? And probably there was a lot more people in here. John Pearson, here in the corner, died December something, not very clear, and his wife Sarah. That's in this uh, Wesley, what's it called? Wesley Waterless. Yeah, there probably were quite a few people in here. It's not a very big community though, but it doesn't look like a very big village. It's like pebble dash some of the walls are lined with on them. And some restoration work's been done on the, one of the stained glass windows. Oh, we've got more bridge. This is a bridge area. We've got a big monument with two upright crosses on plinths. One's Richard Bridge, who died um, 18, 20, 1921, and Isabella Ellen, his wife, who died December 1925, and then Hannah Bridge, who died 16th of February 1937, aged 61, and her husband Frederick Bridge who died the 19th of March, 1955, aged 77. So Richard could have been the father of um, Frederick. I suppose there's one leaning up against the wall. Oh, we found some flax. They keep turning up. There's John Flack, who died June the 19th, 1887, aged 75. And Mary wife of the above, who died January the 2nd, 19-0-something. Then next to that, we've got Jane Flack, died May the 2nd, 19, looks like 19-something-4. Oh, James Flack, that is, and his wife, Susan Elizabeth. There's Flack people. Very high grass, but they are cutting it down here. Got John somebody, Heath. The John Heath, his wife Elizabeth. She died in 1885. Or he did. Oh yeah, John Heath and Elizabeth, coincidentally, it says here, died December the 7th, 1883, aged 78 years. They both died together. There's another bridge here. There's a bridge here as well. Can't read that one though. But Edward Howlett, who died December the 12th, 1886, aged 75, and his wife Eliza Louisa. Who died in 1894, 12th of August, aged 74. And there's a little one. Some of these are big. Um, Elizabeth, wife of William Stretton. Oh, I remember Stretton. Got a Stretton somewhere. Elizabeth, wife of William Stretton, who died February 1886, aged. 
something 767. She did, Elizabeth, his wife, and William Stratton, husband of the above, died November uh, 16, 18. I can't quite read it. Nine to, no, 1901, age 75. I've got an Alfred Ernest Firth, born March 7th, 1865, died October 16th, 1917. And another one next to that, daughter of Ernest and Sarah Firth, Sylvia, she died 18... 92. No, she was born 1892, died 1906. This little church is open, so I've come in to have a look. It's got a bell. It's quite big inside, actually. Whosoever thou art that enterest this church, leave it with not kneeling down, say a prayer to God for thyself and for those who minister and those who worship here. Men of the Great War, there was a gin, a grass, a Pearson, a plum, a precious a sergeant, two starlings, two webs. And there's in honour, in honoured and grateful memory of R. G. Clements and J. H. F. Green, who gave their lives in the Second World War. Um, and there's a little plaque, a little brass plaque, which says, Here lies Giles Allington. The son of Richard Allington, Squire, which Giles died the 26th of April, 1592. And Susan Allington, late wife of Giles, um, who died 14th day, 1594. There's um, Ivy L.A. Steary, S-T-E-R-R-Y, who died... December the 19th, 1961, age 68. She was the last head teacher of Wesley Waterless School, which was founded in 1873 and reached the end of the road, being closed on July the 4th, 1954. There's a whole list of um, rectors of Wesley Waterless. So there was a Arthur Mason, MA, in 1885, one of those. some big tomb-like structures at the back of the church near the bell tower. They're sort of held by big brass clasps against the wall. Obviously old tomb covers, I should imagine. And you've got the font. Um, can't see any postcards or anything, though. No. Right, we've been around the church. I said hello to some very strange-looking locals. Um, who didn't respond at all, and we're, uh, and we're trapped in here. <laughs>